Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Rodeo Time, the podcast 2.0. Welcome. We, uh, well, we should say 90.0. Yeah. So uh, we've got Donnie on the mix board. Yeah, this is the coolest thing ever. Yeah. Uh, so give me a learning curve, and we'll really get some stuff figured out here in the next couple of weeks. We've upgraded our board. We're trying to improve our sound. Yeah. Because there's been some in the past... There's been some complaints, not by really the listeners, but really more by Dale, because I just, and sometimes we forget to hit record. So now we have a board on the table at all times, and there's a big red light. Yeah, and this thing, you can pause like a recording, like you don't have to turn it off. Oh, that way if I want to tell a story that needs to not be recorded? Yeah, and then you can pick up, and it'll be like on the same timeline. But so I can, I can connect my phone to this, so. Let's hear it. You can connect your phone and what? It's just on your phone. Oh, dang. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Okay. Just give me a couple, <laughs> give me a couple weeks. Well, we'd like to thank uh, DaleBrisby.com for bringing us this podcast. We've got long sleeve tees in the house, as uh, you see Willie and I wearing uh, two of our most popular shirts now in a long sleeve form. We've actually got like four styles in long sleeve. So, um <clears throat> So check out DaleBrisby.com. Got a lot of new stuff online. We don't ever really talk about it enough. We're going to probably start talking about it in late October, November, whenever it's getting close to Black Friday. But that is actually what brings in all the interns, brings in all the people, but um, and brings in the upgrade on our listening equipment. We've also got these arms here. Donnie doesn't think they do that much extra. But look at that. I just sat back in my chair, mm. and I still sound good. Mm, look at that. So Donnie's got to sit forward. The rest of us, we can sit back. We can bend. We've got Sacrifices these Sacrifices I make for you got your guys' comfort. Those of you listening only may not know what we're talking about, but we've we've just got a new podcast set up. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can see that. Um, let's roll the intro. Bam, bam. All right, That's and, hard, and here we go <laughs> with, the, with the podcast. That's, uh, oh man, you're even like fading it out. I like it. Yeah. Um, this is like the Xander Kelly show. Golly, dude. I don't know who that is, but. 98.6. I've got like Xander just Kelly a show. little bit of my drink. It's almost like it's like an adult drink. Dale's on, back on the liquor. It's, it's <laughs> actually. He's back on the liquor. It's actually just caffeine. Um. It's a strawberry spark, but I've had a lot this morning. Oh, no. This would be my fourth drink. No, oh. It's not the fourth full spark. I was going to say. No, this is my third. <laughs> this is my third. It's I really had one full on the one, then a half one, and this is a three-quarter one. So I'm at two and a quarter sparks. Um, so speaking of caffeine, I've got a fellow caffeine lover to my left, Mr. Logan West. Uh, I've known, known Logan for 16 years now. Um Logan, say hello. Hey, I noticed I didn't get the the clap button. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Mister. That feels better. <laughs> Logan Wes, known yeah. you for sixteen years, but I don't know. I don't know your middle name, Edward. Yeah. No, it's not. It is. What is it? It's Edward. No, it's not. You're just gonna say that because you don't want us to know your your middle name. I have a feeling it's Edward. It's Edward. What's your middle name? None. Your beeswax. Mm. That's for me and your mom to know only. There you go. Dale, none of your beeswax brings it. <laughs> <laughs> Logan Eugene mm-hmm. West. His middle name is Eugene, y'all. I knew that he didn't want us to know his real middle name. Eugene. <clears throat> Good name. Strong name. Logie. Tell us the Logan West story. Do we have enough time for it? Probably not. Give us the, the, the short story. Mm. Grew up in Snyder. That's where we met, by the way, kindergarten. I went to kindergarten in Snyder, Texas. Yep, land of the white buffalo. <clears throat> that was enough about you. Now back to me. Kindergarten in Snyder, Texas. Let me tell you guys what that was like. So I walk in. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. White buffalo, what do you mean? There, uh, <laughs> there was a guy named Jay Wright Moore who was a buffalo hunter around there, and he shot a white buffalo. And uh, you know, I think the, the Comanche thought that was pretty powerful. 
medicine, a white buffalo. Yeah. I've seen the hide. You can still go see the hide and the Sharps 50 <laughs> cal that he shot it with. Um, it's pretty interesting. So I think he wiped out a lot of buffalo around there. But. Yeah, you know how like some towns like Amarillo, they have like a quarter horse, like random businesses all around will like have a quarter horse like either on top of their building or out in there if they got a yard or whatever. So like in Snyder, it's a buffalo. Like at the around the courthouse, there's a white buffalo. Nice. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of their thing. The town mascot. I don't think it's the school mascot. No, it's it's the tigers, which is weird because I don't think he did ever. not kill a white tiger no. there. So well, we don't know that. We can't say that for sure. I guess he could have. So, bringing it full circle. Now that you guys have heard Logan's story, um, <laughs> <laughs> Logan is who. Um, wrote the second half of um, Dale. What are, what are we calling it? The movie. It, you know, I think it's still up for debate, but I believe the working title was "Riding Bulls and Punching Fools." The Adventure of Dale Brisby, yeah. or something like that. I like it. Yeah. So Logan put it in screenplay format. The Ballad of Dale Brisby. Yeah. Yeah. Um, submitted it into Screen Actors Guild thing. I might have registered it. Yeah. No, you did. Okay. Yeah. So it's official, ladies and gentlemen. We are through phase one. That's the hardest phase probably to get through. Just huh? 16 more to go. <laughs> there, um, there, I have this like, it's not really a fear because if we were going to turn it into a movie, then we would, you and I would probably both let it happen. But just like if somebody was like, all right, we've got all this money, all this funding, and we wanted, we want to roll, roll tide in Obama on your movie. Then uh, I could just see it like, all right, we like, we like all of it, except the middle, and the ending, and also the beginning. So we're gonna kind of move this and change it, and then it ends up being nothing. <laughs> that, that yeah, <laughs> I feel like that happens sometimes. All the time, I bet. Yeah. I bet. It, I bet. I bet so. But I mean, if that's the case, and we still get to be writers on the credits, and we like the story, then money spends the same, right? <clears throat> Who needs artistic integrity when you yeah. know? I see. I picture this being very Joe Dirt esque. Like, we're already doing research for the movie. Um, explain. I like it's just a real underdog story, you know, because you're just kind of a mm. loser. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's no, he say? Pathetic. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just a real feel good slap happy comedy. Slap happy comedy. Yes. Yeah. I don't know how good you'll feel, but you got to be really really bored, kind of like the Netflix show. So, yeah. but, but once you watch the Netflix show, you love it. You can't put it down. We've got a very high completion rate. That's the rumor. It's going around the rumor mill. Just water cooler talk. A high percentage of people that start the show, finish it. As per my connection, who is kind of the Joe Dirt of Netflix, <laughs> the janitor at their main office. <laughs> So, <laughs> boiler room. yeah, he's like, hey, <laughs> this is what I heard so far. <laughs> yeah. But, um, <clears throat> so back to your story. It's It's been interesting so far. We want to hear more. Snyder, then what? Yeah, Buffalo, we covered that. Uh, left. <laughs> I'll stop asking questions. Uh, <laughs> I uh, went to school at Texas A&M, and uh, then I'm, just been kind of bumping around a whole bunch of other places since then, living uh, Pleasanton now, south of San Antonio. So last night, I get home. This was interesting. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your story. <laughs> um, <laughs> I pull up, and Donnie is like running to my truck. and He's like, Dale, Dale, there was a lady here, and don't worry, we got her license plate. Why don't you tell your beginning of the story? All right. Because so. I'm telling you this story, Logan. <clears throat> It was a dark and dusky night. No, but the sun was setting. It was kind of eerie. Midwest Texas, you know, sun sets about 8.30. No, about a little before 8 o'clock this time of year. Um, you good? Yep. Yeah, where's my cough button? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Hold on, watch what this button does. <laughs> that was pre-programmed. I didn't even have to put it in there. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, we're sitting at the tax shed and... Willard is uh, standing a little bit to my right, a little bit. And he's, like, staring down the driveway, and out on the highway, there's a, a figure. And you can tell she's using what? Can I say what I said? 
I know what you said. Dude, there's someone filming us. <laughs> <laughs> so that's so he says that, and I, I was like, no, wh- what are you talking about? And I look down there, and sure enough, there's a, <laughs> there's a lady, like, standing in the middle of the road, like, 300 yards down the road, like, just looks like she's filming us. And then, like, she's got a car parked off to the side where you can't see. I'll, I'll start. Going a little faster. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was wondering if you were purposefully like, <laughs> anyway. Continue. Well, she gets in her car and comes down and like goes around. And then I see her make the block. And I was like, okay, like she's coming back around. I'm going to start walking out towards the road so I can stop her if she comes back by. And sure enough, she comes back by and I get out there and she like speeds up, it seems like, to like blow past us because she sees us coming out there to stop her. And then she goes down to the next stop sign and sits there for like what seems like a few minutes and Long enough for Willard to go get his truck and me and her, me and him go after her. At the speed limit. Yeah. And <laughs> she suspiciously pulls over, like, in a park and, like, gets out and makes it look like she's, I thought she was, like, making it look like she was doing something. And I was like, this is suspicious. So Dale comes back and I just gave him my report and he can pick the story up from there. Yeah. So I was like, well, let's go. And then as we're pulling around the corner, Donnie was like, well, if she's still at the park, that's probably a pretty good sign that it was all innocent. So she was still at the park. Yeah. <laughs> so we were tipped off that it probably wasn't someone being malicious. So I was like, all right, now what? Well, first I had to go get my lottery ticket from the <clears throat> from the gas station. So we went to Jerry's. We were watching her through Jerry's window. Which, is, yeah, happens to be right across the street. Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's the play here? <laughs> what are we going to do? Located. And we had a BB gun in the back seat of the Shadow truck. Shadow Whisperer. But... We don't have any BBs for it. so oh, I had some in the glove box. Yeah, but it takes forever to load it. Yeah, and it sometimes they fall out because the whole thing is plastic. <laughs> <laughs> but so, uh, but we didn't think we needed the BB gun. Turns out we did it because I walk up and I was like, hello. And the lady like pleasantly <laughs> introduces herself to me. And I say, some of the guys who work for me said you were looking for me, which I felt like was a really kind way to say what the were you doing at my house taking pictures of my house? (laughs) And she's like, oh, yeah, well, we're just trying to kind of figure out where we're going to have the parade this Saturday for for Winnebago. And we can hear this from the truck. There's some low-hanging trees on your street, and we were worried that it was going to hit the kids on the trailer. (laughs) And I was like, oh, yeah, just let me know. I know the perfect guys to trim those trees (laughs) if you need them trimmed. I didn't hear that part of the story. (laughs) (laughs) So I was like, well, have a good evening. Goodbye. And I walk fast back to the truck. Unload the baby gun. (laughs) (laughs) We had an attack dog at the ready. Yeah. So anyways, that was our exciting uh, Wednesday night. Yeah. But. What was more exciting on Wednesday, we went to Craig Cameron's yesterday. The All the interns got some uh, one-on-one training with one of the greatest horse trainers of all time. And he doesn't like the word, but the word that gets thrown around is clinician. Puts on clinics Bless and, you. Uh, for horse training. And um, <clears throat> so, yeah, we went through one by one. What did you guys think of that? I thought it was really cool. I learned a lot. Yeah, definitely learned a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was a really good experience, though. Um, Donnie had Donnie had uh, was on Buster Rhymes, who bucked, and then was like wound up like a two dollar watch, and uh, so he was he had the most challenging horse of the day. Yeah, <laughs> I thought that was the coolest thing of the whole day was watching that because it was two completely different horses from the beginning of when he started at, until the end. Right, yeah, we were sitting that up was, on the fence. That was watching the coolest it, thing I saw all day. Yeah, so Craig Craig got him. Calmed down after his bucking, and then Donnie jumped on him, which he was still like balled up, and raring to go, yeah. pun intended. And um, yeah, so he had to go through this pattern with Craig over his shoulder. Craig doesn't hold back, no, 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 at all. He's, no. He does. He does. There's no. He doesn't want to waste time. So like, I'll see you guys doing something, <clears throat> and I might give you like one or two things to work on, and I'm like. I'll just give them the other 19 later. You know, (laughs) (laughs) that's a joke, but like, it might be like five things, but like, I just don't want to also, I have the advantage of time. Yeah. Craig had literally 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So it's a water hose of information coming at you where I just had just a little bit of time. I mean, I've got a lot of time. So like, it's like, yeah, let's stretch this out over the course of your internship. Let you learn something build on top of that maybe that's not the way to go 
You know what struck me, though, about the way that he was teaching was that he really, I mean, obviously he went over the, you know, technical things, but he talked a lot about the spirit of the horse. And, yeah. you know, that, like, that, that they, you know, because they feel different vibrations, you know, right. just emotionally. And he, he touched on that a lot, which I thought was really cool. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so... And it makes sense, you know, that you just, you better, the better you understand the horse, the better you're able to communicate with them and get accomplished what it is you want to accomplish. So, yeah, people forget that they're prey animals. Yeah. You know, like he said, the largest eye on a mammal in North America. Mm -hmm. And those eyes are on the side of their heads so that they can see behind them, so that they can run away from things. Predators' eyes, like for instance humans, our eyes are in the front moving forward. Because we're going to attack something. A horse, deer, those kind of, a cow, they're all on the side of their heads so they can see around them so they can run from things. So we are predators, not prey. <coughs> anyway, yeah, I was driving home and Peyton, my lawyer, he was, uh, <coughs> he was like, what, what's going on? And, and I was like, oh, we're coming home from this. And he was like, he's like, oh my gosh, you need to take them to a, a drunk sheriff posse's house on an old crippled retired <laughs> barrel pony and have him throw beer cans at him and tell and <laughs> show him how the rest of us had to learn <laughs> yeah. i started laughing but i mean it's one day I, it was it, it wasn't like a <clears throat> it's not like y'all got to spend the summer with craig cameron but i think he he was his point was it's like craig cameron jb mooney trevor brazil of course we just did the netflix show with trevor but we did get to you know be there that's that's probably the next thing. If we were able to do something with Trevor for roping, that would be meaningful. I'm pretty bad at roping. <sighs> that's one thing I don't claim to be the greatest at. So, what did you think of yesterday? I just told you. <laughs> for your personal <laughs> horsemanship. It, it was a lot, you know, in, in trying to... Um, you know, trying to take that all in. But he, he hit on some things over and over with everybody. And so I think that, you know, if you if you had the time to spend doing that, it would start to kind of become muscle memory. But it definitely made me think a lot differently about, you know, hand placement and, and how you're using your reins. Yep. Because that can, you know, at least for me and my experience, sometimes that just kind of is – just goes out the window not thinking about it too much, you know, like, well, I'm holding them, so I must be <laughs> doing it right, you know. Yeah. They may be up here. Right. You know. Yeah. So. I really liked his analogy where he was, where he goes like, yeah. He's like, he was yeah. like you don't know what I'm saying right there. You don't want to move your hands and that fast. Goes, but if I do it slower, he points at you, he points at himself, puts his hand to his mouth. And he does the walking symbol, and then he points over there. He's like, then you're going to say, oh, I think he wants me and him to walk over there and get something to eat. <laughs> that was, like, huge, you know. Yeah. But I think it's most effective and, and it's most meaningful when you're talking about, like, a young horse, you know, because you can be that quick with those commands to an older horse that seasons that you've been communicating with. You know, you just add those signals, and you can do them that fast, and that's how you get, like, a – a finished show horse or a cutting horse or just a ranch horse that knows the deal, you know, but like a young horse, you can only give them one cue at a time and really you build on that foundation. So <clears throat> that was one thing that my old man, he was talking about, he was talking about either like parenting or being an employee, you know, being a manager of employees. I couldn't remember, but it works with both scenarios, but like you expect different things out of a, the boons of the world compared to a cult. You know, you get on a different horse and you expect different things. So, like, I would, I expect different things from Willie rather than Lisa, you know. So, there's just a certain level of, of grace that Willie is going to be extended. No offense. Uh, I that get it. Lisa, my expectations would be higher. But <clears throat> also, Lisa, just like Boone, when you do that good of a job, you get a little more grace anyway. So, You'll get there, Willie. What do you think of rodeo time, Willie? What do you think of? Give me give me your, what is it? Whew. You got here in April. It's October. 
You've been here six months. Give me your six month report. Do you want? You have um, like the full picture. What's it called? Uh, immunity. You got two minutes. Well, I've never heard anybody keeping their job after something like this. <laughs> <laughs> You've got three minutes. You can say whatever you want. You get to keep your job no matter what. Well, I mean, if I'm being honest, it's probably my favorite job I've had. Mm. Well, not probably, definitely is. Probably. Is this your first job? No. I've actually had some interesting <coughs> jobs, believe it or not. But like we were talking about yesterday, I think you're right about it's important to be at jobs that you know that's not what you want to do for the rest of your life. As much as it is, it's important for you to be at a job that you're like, man, I, I could be around here for a while. Yeah. I mean, if, if you allow me to, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so Willie was talking about uh, loading trucks, loading planes. Airplanes. For FedEx at 3 in the morning at an airplane hangar. It was a lot of fun. And then uh, being a chicken farmer and rotten eggs dead chickens, cleaning those out <laughs> because free range chickens um, are pretty disgusting. Yeah. I would say chickens in general, no, no offense to anybody in the poultry industry, but right. But if you had a choice between caged chickens and free range chickens, which one would you choose? Cattle. <laughs> <laughs> Beef. Yeah. So, for dinner. so anyway, he was talking <laughs> about having those jobs and, uh, <clears throat> But really, that's just perspective. Yeah. You know, you've got incredible perspective. So I've got a few of those old jobs that I go back to. Um, <coughs> no offense to Pete Scamardo at all, but I, when I worked at Scamardo Cattle Company, like there were some there were some long nights processing. Not even, it could have been, I also did the same thing at uh, the feedlot. You know, the feedlot was worse than whenever I was at Scamardo Cattle Company. Pete was an awesome guy great boss but just like processing cattle is just get when you're on that crew only yeah that's all you do nine ten hours a day you know giving shots running them through push them up push them up it's it's the least one of the least glamorous jobs you can do in the cowboy industry yeah and so i, I was i did that there in college but then when i was a teenager i worked at the feedlot outside of memphis it was actually outside of headley <coughs> graveyard shift because it was, you know, hot in the summertime, and so we would do it in the middle of the night to uh, for all for right. All right, for uh, these these calves, you know, keeping everything, you know, cool. And um, anyways, that job was pretty graveyard shift at the feedlot on the processing mm. crew, not horseback loading trucks where you could at least throw a leg over your saddle horn and you know pretend that you're doing real cowboy stuff, which you are, but I'm saying like you could pretend you're out in a, you know, at least you're working on your horse. Yeah. No, this was a foot. Yeah. Pushing up that, 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 those are the moments I go back to that are like, oh man, when I have a tough day as a YouTuber, boo hoo, <laughs> but it gives you perspective. Yeah. yeah. So that's, I, I respect guys that work at sale barns a lot. Cause I went and worked in at the, you know, in the back at some sale barns in South Texas when I was getting ready to go to auctioneer school, just so I could kind of understand that. And it's a lot of that, you know. There may be a guy or two, depending on how big the place is, a guy or two horseback, and they're, you know, everybody else is is on foot and moving cattle around all day, and there's no air moving back there, and down there, you know, sometimes they'll bring in a load that you know hasn't seen people in a year, and they're waspy, and they get, you know, and you're working in tight quarters, and it's a long day. Man. Yeah, it's it's hard work, and they're all very glad that they just they have to do it once a week. Yeah, yeah, most sale barns. What was Unless the, you have a couple sale barns you're going to. What was the, you know, because sometimes it's not always the hardest. What was the worst job you ever had? Worst? In what sense? Um, I mean, just w when you look back on it, you just think, I could not have gotten out of there fast enough. Man, when I was in college, like a TA, when I was in grad school. Oh, really? Yeah. It wasn't, I mean, it was just, I did that to get through school. Yeah. You know, like it, not, not so like <clears throat> with scholarships, with rodeo scholarships and that job at A&M as a grad student, it, it ended up costing me $900 a semester. So I was like, well, I'm gonna go ahead and get my graduate degree because, and I, I wanted it, you know, but like, because it was, it was so inexpensive for, for a really good school, obviously. And so I found myself there for two years and I was like, 
I just, I, I wasn't able, I was rodeoing, you know, for the college. So that was a relief. But like, aside from rodeoing, like I just, I wasn't horseback. I was like, literally it'd be like today, you know, it's like 82 degrees outside, sunny. Well, like I was inside grading papers. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like <clears throat> that was on a Thursday afternoon at two in the afternoon. Yeah. So that, that was, it just didn't fit me. No, that's what I'm talking about. Cause I, so, I mean, I can tell you mine, it's the same answer every time. Cause like I worked at a bull development place in college for a little while and that was hard, you know, and it was, it was not close to town. So it was, you know, two pretty good drives every day, but it, man, it was fun. And then at one point I worked for a place that uh, we would call and administer surveys just you know companies would do surveys or, or politicians would have these survey and you would and we'd start at like three or four o'clock in the afternoon on the east coast and work our way all the way to the west coast to like 10 or 11 o'clock at night and man i got called everything but a good milk cow you call people and interrupt them at dinner well, let me ask you a few questions and they uh-uh. right uh, that one was terrible well that was back when everybody answered every single yeah. phone call people you know? still had landlines then <laughs> right <laughs> yeah that's fun <laughs> no, that would not be fun. But yeah. I would say being in that office, but like that wasn't it's just different work. You know, you're you're mentally exhausted, but you're you're not tired, you know. Yeah. So now all of a sudden like you're laying awake at night, yeah. you can't sleep, something like that. But like graveyard shift at the feed lot, it, it's it's kind of a head to head race between those yeah. two. Because being a T you know, that that at least like paid a little better. I got to interact with people other than just my drunk boss who I had to drive home at 14 years old. I was 14, <laughs> not my drunk boss. But <clears throat> um, so those are those are jobs that give me perspective. But at the end of the day, you know, I listen to the Joe Rogan. You, these guys have heard me talk about it, the, you know, quite a bit. But you listen to that Joe Rogan podcast with the girl that escaped from North oh, Korea. Oh, man. Did you hear that? Yeah. That's yeah. the most harrowing y- thing. Yonimi Park. How do, Yon, how do you Yonmi, I think. Yonmi. Yonmi Park. Yeah. I think something like that. Yeah. I think about that every day. Yeah. Yeah. You want to talk about perspective. Stick with you. Yeah. Talk about perspective. Like getting, tri- she didn't even know that she didn't even know the internet existed. Like she didn't, you know, she's like 15, 16, 20, whatever age she escaped. She's like, she didn't even know that like those cameras existed. She didn't know a, what a podcast was. They don't even have a word for it in their language. Yeah. And so here we are complaining which I am pretty frustrated. Freak! I don't know why IG that my posts go against community guidelines. I haven't. I don't remember anything getting removed off of IG. But anyway, I'm getting frustrated about that. And here she is having to. Yeah, if you're yeah, a picky eater, eat, eat bugs. Yeah, if you're a picky eater, you know, <laughs> live on grasshoppers for a little while and see how that goes. That's that's one of the probably one of the main things. That just because like, so I've tried to eat more apples lately. And uh, I don't like apples, but they're pretty healthy, turns out. And I get pretty. But I, if I'm going to eat an apple, since I don't like apples, I want it to be like the right ripeness, you know. You so I'll find myself eating into like a soft apple that is like just too ripe. And good heavens, I just want to throw it against the wall. But then I think about Yonmi Park, and I'm like, yeah. I just power through this fruit that I hate. <laughs> You don't like Anyways. apples, but you've been eating more of them. Yep. How do you like them apples? <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> What's the saying? An apple day keeps the doctor away. Yeah. So I, I think anything. The other keep. saying is some of life's greatest apples lessons are hidden in cliches. Mm. But like and apples. Anything will keep someone away if you throw it hard enough. <laughs> My man. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> is that one of yours? Yeah, yeah I yeah, said it a long time ago. I forgot it though. Yeah, I didn't even see one. it coming when you said it. Oh, yeah. I was waiting for it. An apple a day keeps everyone away if you throw it hard enough. <laughs> um, but yeah, what job has given you the most perspective on? Because you've been doing this job for two and a half years. Yeah. Um, man, I can't say the name of the company because my stepdad works there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, he he worked for uh, he works for a a rock company uh they put a, a lot of like it's a lot of like granite and limestone that goes on the side of real nice buildings and stuff but we have a lot of, i worked in the yard like 
sometimes my job would be like restacking like pallets had been there so long that they had rotted away out from underneath the rock so i had to just take a new pallet out there and stack the rock back onto a pallet wow yeah so like it wasn't going anywhere <laughs> like, but other times i'd be like walking around this gravel parking lot and picking up chunks of rock that didn't belong in the gravel wow. lot <laughs> and throwing it into a, a guy a guy would follow me around in a skid steer and i'd just throw it in the bucket behind me yeah and then i would Bag gravel some days, like literally the jobs that you think of, like when you're in prison and they let you out. And so you're doing for a day, like yeah. on a work program. Man, I just did not want to be there, but my stepdad wouldn't let me quit, you know. And I was just like, I just don't want to do this job. That, that reminds me of a summer job I had once at Ace Hardware, helping do inventory. Yeah, when you have to do inventory on a certain size bolt mm-hmm. and count the bolts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And it takes you an hour and a half, and then you put it back, and you go to the next box right under it. <laughs> <laughs> I would build pallets sometimes, and that was like taking, it was, it was like cattle panel, like uh, a grid kind of like yeah. mesh, and taking a staple gun and stapling it to the pallet so they could just pile rock into it, and I had to build a bunch of those. <sighs> Yeah, no thanks. It was like the hottest, driest summer, too, that I think <laughs> I had, like, in Missouri at the time. I, like, I got to mow grass, but I think we only mowed grass, like, one, once or twice that summer. because. And you probably didn't make as much money as you do here. Oh, absolutely not. Not even close. It, I made minimum wage there. Yeah. But I was using my truck a lot, to, yeah. and my truck, gas was like $4, $4.5 a gallon at the time. When I turned 16, gas was high. I think it's higher than it's ever been. Wow. Dang. Yeah. Chicken farming, um, office job, ace, calling people. Man, that would be tough. What percentage of people were irate that you called them at night? About 105%. Yeah. Okay. But at least they're on the other side of the phone, you know. <laughs> the, fu- the funny part of it, too, was that, you know, some of those questions were open-ended. You know, some of them were... A, B, C, choose one of these. Some of them were yes, no. Some of them were, tell us what you think about this. And you would have to type what they were saying. Oh. I typed pretty fast, and I was having a hard time keeping up with it. And I'd look over to the person next to me, and they were going, <laughs> you know, I'm, I thought, There's, they're not getting any of this. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, that and building fence, I think. Yes. Yeah. But that was a little different because it was your own company. Yeah. Um, yeah. I assume it was different. Building fence stinks. Good character builder, though. Yeah. I'm just kidding. It's not so, bad. you're in college. Back to the Logan West story. <laughs> <laughs> you went to college at A&M. What did you study? Uh, Buffalo. Yeah. <laughs> the thing about Buffaloes is the, the bulls will hook you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I still... Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, Barlow was a slow thinker. Kind of like someone else I know. Slow walker when that Buffalo got that one. <laughs> Whatever happened to him? He married a, a a fat widow yeah. on the Blanco River and had a passel of kids, and you might as well do the same if you don't want to chase buffalo. Well, I like being a bachelor, Dale. I'm sure it's all in God's plan that you are one. Mm-hmm. Let's finish it out. <laughs> and Let's keep going. See, <laughs> some of my best work right there. Lonesome Dove. That is such a good banter. That's such it's a good so scene. Good. Yeah, it's just natural, especially you know, since like, it was like the beginning of the end. Yeah. Don't ruin it for Willie. I've already seen it. <laughs> Golly. How many times? Once. <laughs> week. You haven't seen it. W E A K. If you sorry, I'm from Maryland and they don't do cool oh stuff my up gosh, there. I'm sorry they don't have movies in Maryland. Listen, you <laughs> Yankee hole. All right. Hey. Um <laughs> mid roll. Uh yeah. Text me. Nine four oh three five three oh eight nine oh. Text um uh, what what do we text? Special offer. And I'm going to keep you um, posted on certain things that come available on DaleBrisby.com that are that are uh, new, like these long sleeve tees. I'll tell you about, um, you know, when we have free shipping, when we have buy one get one. Also, text JB Poster to nine four zero three five three zero eight nine zero that if you want to be kept in the loop on. Um, <clears throat> Whenever JB signs stuff and we have it for sale, 
sometimes that's the only time that you'll be notified of when something like I don't put post on my Instagram. Hey, go check out DaleBrisby.com because JB's signed caps are online. I'll only text it. I don't I don't post it. So text me podcast if you're interested in keeping up with when we post a podcast. 940-353-0890. Thank you for sitting through that. Back to Logan's story. You studied what outside Ag- of Lonesome Dove? Agribusiness. The business part of ag. Yeah. It's a lot yeah. of agricultural economics and then classes in the business school. And yeah. How'd you like how'd you like being a realtor? Are you still do, being a No, no I, I sold ranches for a little bit. Um, I, I didn't enjoy I loved the guy that my broker. Um, yeah. Yeah. Did you not enjoy sales or did you not enjoy selling land? Well, the, the the problem is in the, you know, in the ranch real estate game, there's some, you know, the, there's a few big players in it and, you know, kind of regionally, but they're going to, you know, they're going to sell the big ranches. Um, and when you're starting out and, you know, you don't have those connections, what you end up doing a lot is selling 30 acre places, you know, which is fine. But the problem with that is you're going to sell a property that's worth about as much as, as a house in town. And it's going to take five times longer to sell. Right. And you've got to be out there every time somebody looks at it. Yep. Um, it's, it's just much more, and you get a lot of tire kickers and it's harder to get financing for something like that. You know, you can go and, and get a loan for a mortgage for a house a little bit easier, I think, than you yeah, can. Yeah, homestead. You know, so, Absolutely. So you get a lot of tire kickers that come and look at it and that's, you know, every time you need to go out there and it's just, it's just kind of a, a slot. Now, if you really love that business, that would just be how, you know, the, how you would put your time in. You right. Know, until you got to where you were selling bigger and bigger places. But, uh. No, I worked for Rupel Properties down there, and he and Garrett Rupel's a really, really good guy. And he's a good broker, but um, I didn't. This wasn't for me. Yeah, I wish we auctioned more real estate in Texas yeah. than we do. But because then I think you know, I might have done some of that. But. Yeah, my uh, my granddad w- worked with a guy I grew up around in my whole life, uh, Spanky Asseter. Yeah. He does a lot of. Um, <laughs> That's his name. Yeah, A S S I T E R. Yeah, he's a legend, dude. He's yeah. a boss. Yeah, he does. Uh, he does. Uh, he does a lot of. So you remember on the Speed Channel, whenever there would be like the car auctions yeah. Yeah. on there. So like for the first several years, that he was that auctioneer. Oh really? Yeah. Now he does. Cool. He does. They. He. It seems as though they sell quite a bit of real estate via auction around Amarillo. Yeah, I think it uh, it's more prevalent up in the Panhandle um, than yeah. it is other places because then when in, when you get further up, you know, uh, you know, out of Texas, going in, into the Midwest, it, it seems to be a, a more prevalent practice there. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but yeah, this is just anecdotal. But I don't have any stats on this or anything, but it does seem like when you see ranches for auction in Texas, they tend to be, you know, up here and then into the Panhandle. There was a ranch like west of here that sold for a little bit, it's a little bit back, and it was like a closed seal bid. Yeah, I thought that was so crappy. Yeah, it's, it just seems like uh, it just seems like it would be so. <clears throat> I don't know. It's like a greedy, almost. Just gr- put yeah. it up for sale. The great thing about auctions is, you know, that it's capitalism. Whatever, I get it. It's your place. Sell it how you market. want. But yeah, it's free market. But that was just like. On the buyer side, I would be so frustrated. But it, it is frustrating. But I guess you know it's not like this isn't like a we're not going to sit around and sing kumbaya. They're trying to make money on their place, right? Anyways. Yeah, but you can you can leave money on the table as a seller too. You know that's yeah. what the auctioneers always talk about price discovery. And if everybody's sitting in the same room, you know the actual legitimate interested buyers, and everybody knows what the bid is at that time, then they know. Okay, I'm. Eh, also, there's a there's an excitement to it, you know. Hundred percent. A buyer might spend a little bit more money just because they don't want to get outbid and you get caught up in the moment. Yeah. Um, yeah, they have. A, they're like, all right, I'm only going to spend two hundred thousand dollars on this thirty acres, which I don't know where that would exist outside of like right next to Mexico, maybe. But <clears throat> and then all of a sudden they're in an auction, 
and this guy's at 205 and he's like, well, I guess I can go to 207, you know? Yeah. And then all of a sudden he finds himself at three, 317. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. No, my, my granddad on my mom's side, he was an auctioneer. So I was always, I was always, that's actually, that's a long story, but that's what motivated me to start the website. Cause I was like, <clears throat> my, I was, so I would, I grew up around these auctions and like, I would, I would always, he would get, he would just go down to, they called it the halfway house, you know, and they'd be like, he'd be like, who wants, who wants a job this week? You know, and he would give them a job mm-hmm. and they would throw on a polo and they would bring the furniture up and, um, <clears throat> and then the ring men, isn't that what they're called? Yeah. They would usually, those guys were like guys that had been around auctions a while and so they and they were typically the same people except on new year's day when he would have his big auction and it would be like he would have to bring in a couple extra you know every year that was his big auction <clears throat> so i've been helping him since i was like eight you a know? good ring man is invaluable right sometimes i'd be a ring man but i didn't really enjoy it like i just liked so i i got to wear the couple times a quarter maybe so like Maybe 10 times a year I'd help him at auctions. But really, it's just like I want to spend time with family. I'm just hanging out there. Like, I'm not passionate about auctions, but, like, I'm just going to – I'm here to visit my granddad, and I'm not going to sit in the stands. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Might as well do something. Right. So I would throw on a polo mm-hmm. with the guys from the halfway house, and, and they were my friends. Like, there were some – I've got some really funny stories. <laughs> so most of them are inappropriate. <laughs> but, like, just some of the things that some of these guys – like would talk about and stories and anyways, fun, fun times, but like, whatever, you know, like I'll throw on a, and, and I, I, you know, I kind of, you know, I could be mistaken for someone that might live there, you which is, hard. yeah, which yeah. I'm fine with. I don't, I don't give a sh- you know, like whatever. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, nobody's better than anybody. And so I throw on a polo and it's not that I felt like, I was like better than this ring man, but this dude was talking to me like I was a piece of trash. And I was like, golly, if you, and it, cause he was new, he didn't know who I was. And that's why, I, you know, started with like, I don't think I'm better than him just cause I'm the grand, you know, the, the owner's grandson, but like, don't talk to me like I'm a, you know, piece of trash, you know, like you're the tyrant in North Korea and I'm, you know, one of your, anyway. And uh, just all day, I was just like, finally, I got to where just, and he was just a random guy. It's like, dude, I'm here all the time. I don't even know you. Stop talking to me like this. Finally, he would come up and be like, go back there and get this or that. And I just would, I would act like he didn't exist, you know, like, <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> and, and I didn't want, I wasn't looking for some aha moment where he discovered who I was and then just like was embarrassed. Like, I don't care, yeah. but just don't talk to me like that. Yeah. You know, I'm a human, just like all these other guys that I'm that are wearing polos. Yeah. And, uh, but all day I was just like, I cannot, I never want to work for someone like this. Like I never want to be employed by someone who talks down to other people this way. And that was the beginning of, it was like maybe 60 days after that, DaleBrisby.com came to, I mean, we were already making videos. It might have been less than 60 days. You mean he didn't recognize you? Uh-uh. He's one of the three people. <laughs> what? Which is fine. Like, I don't care. Like, you, I don't want you to, like, no, he treat me like the quote-unquote yeah, prince of, well, it was a whole different, he's one of the four people. I know. That didn't. I know. Yeah. I, I'm just being. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought you were being serious. <laughs> anyway, like, <laughs> it wasn't the Western industry. No, this guy wasn't, which is whatever. But um. it was like, it was just like, <laughs> man, why do you, why do you talk? But, like, I, I guess it was easy for me to just, like, not care and not listen to this guy because um it's not like i knew i wasn't gonna get fired yeah i knew he had no authority and so that was the part of me that was just like bro i'm not even gonna listen to you plus (laughs) being mean to him (laughs) and um so anyways whatever enough about that story but i won't even say his name but i always think about him we'll call him what it rhyme with (sighs) marnold Schwarzenegger. (laughs) (laughs) rhymed with dip (laughs) <laughs> anyway, so Dip was just like talking to me like this. Was Chip? Like, 
<laughs> so Got dip, dip was like I was just like I never want to have a boss like dip so <laughs> old dip at the end man I had a lot of experiences like that working mostly in high school yeah. all, actually all in high school in like blue collared stuff like yeah. that and there's just they, the, the amount of times that like that or just how people talk down like, it just amazes me. I, maybe it's just where I'm from, but some guys yeah. get, like, an ego trip. They get Ooh, some yeah. sort of position. In yeah. A, Dude, uh, I, you uh, guys will notice, like, I, very seldom do I tell someone to do something. Yeah. I don't Most like often, do that I either. ask. Yeah. yeah. Now, at the end of the day, like, if you don't do it, and I ask again, and then, like, we might have to have a conversation because, obviously, like, I want you to do it. But, like... For just like you and I are, you know, and I don't think there's anything wrong with a boss saying, Willie, you need to do this, this, and this today. I mean, you are paying me, so yeah. So like that, that's fine. And like, the, and you can be, you can have some couth when you talk to him like that. But most often I'll just be like, hey man, do you mind going over there and tie up fence days? Yeah. Now, if you say no, I'll be like, okay, well, why not? You know, like we're <laughs> well, going to get to the end of it and there. you're going to probably end up going out there. Yeah. But in the meantime, we can both be gentlemen. You know, we can be, we can be kind. I don't even like to ask, like, in a place of work. <clears throat> like, if you don't do it, I'm probably just going to do, like, right. do it myself. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to Unfortunately, do I run out of time when I do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I'm not the boss, you know, like. So you can do it. I, I don't even, like, in my position now, I don't feel like I have anybody under me. Like, I kind of. Yeah. Like, so, I, I'm not going to ask someone to do it. Like, I'm. Yeah, I'm just gonna like something needs to be done. I'm gonna go do it, and right. I'm, I'm gonna do it the way I want it done, anyways. And I have a bad habit of seeing something a little different, and I'll go like fix it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I feel bad about that, but it's I, I don't know. I yeah. can't help it. I uh, yeah, I just my motivation was it was so it it also kind of helped me mold who I wanted to be as a boss. Mm -hmm. But then, but yeah, my motivation has always been not necessarily that like I want to get rich, I want to buy an island, I want to have a nice boat. You know, I'm not going to buy a boat. Plus, like, why not just have a friend with a boat? It's like yeah. way easier. But anyways, my motivation was always like I just don't want to work for guys like Dip. And so, <clears throat> but then my last job was Dr. Nierlins for Chet. And he was the best boss I'd ever had working for Chet. That was completely, which that was neat. It was neat to just my last job that, that, you know, I had to report to someone was, uh, was my best job. That, that was neat that it was just kind of, you know, the transition. I'm not saying it's going to be my last ever, but <laughs> Lord willing. <laughs> so yeah, we were, and it's when I made maybe the least amount of money. So yeah, that's. That I was the happiest I'd ever been. That doesn't always translate into, I don't know, that kind of stuff's interesting. And the like asking and, and being, you know, a gentleman or however you want to phrase it, that stuff goes a long way towards having a lot of people around who are loyal to you and who want to stay. Culture yeah. matters. Yeah. Culture. That bull place that I worked at in college, that guy said, I remember it. And it was a long time ago, and I remember him saying, I'm never going to yell at you guys for leaving a gate open or leaving water running or anything because I am I do that just as much as anybody out here. As long as you're honest with me and you're trying to take care of these cattle because it's somebody else's cattle, then we're good. And I thought, okay, well, that's one thing to say that, but he he lived that. He never got on us for doing yeah. making a, a silly mistake. He just saw it as a mistake. And we would fix it and go on as long as we were working hard and being honest. And that stuck with me for a long time. Just taking responsibility, yeah. I think, goes so, so yeah. far. Like, if you can be a man about something and mm -hmm. be like, yeah. man, I, I messed up. I effed this up. Yeah. This is my fault. Yeah. Like, if you can do that, like, you can move on from things and really learn There's, from something. And then you can have control over it the next time. Mm. There's little things that, like, some things make me mad, and then some things don't make me mad at all. Like, um, I just got in the flatbed put on, and you backed up, and there's the little bitty, it's like the size of a thimble, yeah. but it's a light. Yeah. 
and you you scraped it and it just popped off. I saw it the other day is what reminded me of it, but yeah. like I just don't care. Yeah. You know? Like it was an accident. It's not that big a deal. <clears throat> but then when a certain intern <laughs> is stretching out the water hose, <laughs> he gets to the end of it and then just keeps pulling yeah. after I've explained to him that water hose is only going to stretch so much <laughs> and then the three quarter inch PVC snaps yeah. at the ground yeah. and the water shoots up in the air and then the next day he does the same thing and I was like oh my gosh because it was just man, like there's someone here dumber than me <laughs> I, was just, I, was so, I was so mad I was so mad and now I still treated him with kindness and uh, the only reason I did yell was to get him to stop before it broke. Yeah. But after that, I'll walk <laughs> over and I was just like, listen, this, this water hose can only stretch so far. What the next thing <laughs> is this, this it's going to break at the faucet, okay? And Man, then that's gonna day be, one stuff right there. We're going to be digging a <laughs> hole and we're going to be replacing this three, I know it's three quarter inch because it's had to be replaced so often. Anyways, there's like little <laughs> stuff like that yeah. that'll just set me off where it's just, it should be so obvious you know when you started telling that story i was i was just about to say well i bet he didn't do it again and then and then <laughs> yeah, no. well, see that was right the frustrating the part no. somebody does it the first time sure. it's like you know like okay almost anything let me teach it's, you this it's like yeah you just didn't know and then it's like he was taking it to the same trough <laughs> it's like did you forget that it didn't reach yesterday yeah i know i can i can pinpoint the most upset i've ever seen you i think and, I, and it hasn't been very often. Like, I, I've known you for a long we've, yeah. been, we've been known each other for a while, and you don't get upset very often. But we had a buddy. And three of us were driving around, and Dale had a dog at the time that had just gotten wrecked by this porcupine. And we were driving around, and lo and behold, and there's no way to tell if it was the exact same porcupine, but, you know, I mean, chances are – and so he slams the brakes on the pickup, throws it in park, gets out, pulls the shotgun out of the truck, and just, you know, this porcupine just dis dispatches everywhere. him quickly. And it was like the most satisfying kill. Yeah. <laughs> Did you? Dude, have you ever pulled quills out of a dog's I've never seen a porcupine. Mouth? Dude, when they, when they bite, they, they try to bite a porcupine. Yeah. So hundreds of... Of these quills oh, going man. in, and then in the mouth, in the yeah. gums, in the Everywhere. tongue. It's pretty expensive to go get a dog knocked out so you can take yeah. these out. Well, when you try to pull a quill out, it's like a vacuum. Mm -hmm. It doesn't just pop. It doesn't just smoothly come out. Yeah. Like, it stays in. It's got a barb on the end, and mm -hmm. then it's like a vac. It's like a straw that's on the end. And, and so when you pull, it, it doesn't come out. So you got to cut the ends off with, a, with scissors. So that then they'll come out real easy because it relieves that vacuum. So you got to push it all the way through and then cut it? No, like the quill will be sticking out. Yeah. <clears throat> There's a barb down in there. Yeah. It's a, it's like a straw. It's like a vacuum. You cut the end off the top and uh, then you pull it okay. out. Ah, oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, dogs, you know, you see that, you know, like a, a like a dog doesn't learn that lesson. Yeah. Uh, if he sees that porcupine, so like these pork, this dog goes back to the porcupine and you know it's the same porcupine because the quills get smaller. Mm -hmm. The next time he gets hit, that's not the same big quills, which then it gets harder to take these quills out. Mm -hmm. So, like, probably three times with two separate dogs, but three total times we had to pull quills. Man, yeah, out that would of dogs. get you riled up. So, I'm going down this county road. <laughs> yes, I'm going to shoot this. I'm going to shoot this porcupine off a of county road. I, I mean, and he was right porcupine. there. A porcupine, for those of you that don't know, where's my camera? A porcupine is like a buffalo. But it's smaller, <laughs> and it has quills. Yeah, needles. Like needles. And, and it's yeah. a rodent. Yes. Yeah. Hundreds yeah. and hundreds of needles. Other than that, pretty similar. It can throw the needles, or if you bite it, they cannot just... throw needles. Like shoot them, not far, but they got a tail. Yeah. I don't think that can't they can they throw them out, <laughs> dude? They can. <laughs> no, they like, dude, not. I'm, like this far, like this far. Uh, I'm not talking like. They they ain't gonna shoot you coming through the door. Yeah. It's not like a gun, <laughs> but like they throw they whip that tail around. Yeah, I've seen them do that. Maybe it's okay. The tail whips around and hits you. Okay. Yeah, if they could shoot him from here to the door, I don't think I'd ever go outside again. <laughs> well, I've never seen a porcupine, so I, yeah, I don't think I have either. 
<laughs> so so anyway, so he offs this porcupine. Uh, what's the what's the correct it's harvest? Bad, he harvests yeah. this porcupine. Pardon me. And uh, our buddy that was with us grew up in the city, and he was he just wasn't used to seeing that kind of thing. Oh, and, and I think it upset him a little bit. City boy. And he just for the next couple of days he would bring it up. It was like, why did you guys? No have remorse. To- yeah. No remorse <laughs> did I have. Right. I had pulled quills out of dog. It takes I, hours. I don't blame you. No, it I takes don't blame hours you. to get these quills out of these dogs. You got two people holding them down, wrap them in a towel. They're freaking out. One of them was a Rottweiler. Oh, man. I'm pulling quills out of a Rottweiler's Golly. face and mouth. Yeah. So, for a couple of days, he's he just keeps, like, bringing it up. Why did you guys have to? That porcupine wasn't doing anything to anybody. I didn't say anything. Finally, he kind of... Sorry for interrupting. Like, I hit I hit the brakes, put it in park, grab the gun, walk around the front. That fast. The sucker's dead. <laughs> yeah, that fast. Was, I wasted no time. Made sure the gun was unloaded, put it back in the truck, put it in drive. We kept going. It was clean. I mean, it's, it's like I was opening a gate. Yeah. Like, I was just like, no feelings, no just remorse. Procedure. Just like, let's get this. He's. We need to get him to stop breathing. Okay, check. Now let's go. So the so the guy finally lets it go, right? Kind of, he just doesn't bring it up for a while. We're driving down the road in the middle of the day, and Dale and I see a turtle on the side of the road. And we're like, "Hey, let's get that turtle." I don't know why we get wanted, him off we, the road. We were gonna get him and get him off the road. And yeah. I don't know if we were gonna take him back or what. But no, I was just gonna get him off the road. So our buddy's driving. I said, "Pull over so we can get this turtle." And so he starts to slow down, pulls over to the side of the road. Dale had the door open, and this guy hits the gas and boom, 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 and runs this turtle over <laughs> and looks back at us with this look on his face like that was somehow revenge for the porcupine. <laughs> like, Are you still friends with this You dude? killed this porcupine, so I'm going to kill something <laughs> you love. And that's exactly what he said. He just went, why? <laughs> what is wrong with you? And he, that he, punch. he got legit upset about that for, for a minute. I th- he just didn't understand. So Boy. there's three times this gentleman got me mad that summer. And I thought the second time, I thought, is what you were going to say. We're driving down the road. Oh. <clears throat> Do I know this guy? Uh-uh. You right. never met him. And uh, we're driving down the road, and I hit a bird. Just hit the windshield. Okay, whatever. Well, there was a little bit of blood and some feathers mm-hmm. on the windshield. He leans forward and looks at it. Boom. Tries to hit it with his hand that has a ring on it. Like four oh, rings. man. And splits my windshield. Oh. The feather is still there. How are you friends with this guy? Just, <laughs> oh, that's my bad. <laughs> I tried to hit this feather off the windshield from inside the truck. Just what did you splits think? it. What's gonna happen? Exactly. Dude. <laughs> this dude is like, oh man, he's he's not just smart. Oh, he's man. brilliant. Yeah, like he's a he is a too smart for his own. Good. He's got two degrees. Yeah. Yeah. like he's a brilliant. Also, individual. one of the greatest guys that's that I've ever known. Yeah. He's no, this dude guy. is like, we're not making him look very good. But. <laughs> no, we're not. And then the third time, uh, here's some good more. stories. Caprice about Classic. That was his car. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Middle of the night, like two in the morning. Them seats go way back. I might as well have been sleeping in a bed in the passenger seat. And I wake up to a cop knocking on the passenger window and saying, sign this ticket I'm giving you for not wearing a seatbelt. And I was like, you son of a bitch. Why would you not wake me up and tell me to put my seatbelt on? Anyways, he got pulled over and didn't wake me up. So I got a seatbelt ticket. I felt like he could have woke me up. Yeah, but good guy, though. Good guy. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's the third maddest I've been at him. Yeah. I know. Uh, I I know vividly the maddest you've ever been at me, and it was very early on in my career here. And I don't think you've even come close to being that mad at me or even like upset. When was with. that? Um, It was a day. That day we were moving, like, all them pallets. You were sitting on the Can-Am? Yeah. 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 We were waiting on well, we were waiting on somebody, but I think we were just <laughs> effing around. <laughs> you gonna tell remember. the story? Yeah, so I'll tell it. Cool. <laughs> it was that was the first time I had two interns, mm-hmm. which is insignificant to the story. But Charles was here. <clears throat> Charles was trying to 
he was uh, he was about to go into the Marines, so he was doing something that morning. I don't know. I thought he had already gotten back from a deployment. Yeah, but yeah, so he he had gotten. He back. was getting ready to get He had just gotten back, but he was doing something because he was still technically active military, mm-hmm. and he had to like do something. Yeah, paperwork something. <clears throat> but he was working for me because he was, you know. He wasn't going to move in with his fiance, and so which she lived in Dallas, and so he didn't. You know, he was kind of like three months away. It was like, all right, well, you can live here and work here, and then, you know, that way when you get married, you just move in <clears throat> with her. It was just in a weird time. Like he didn't need to go get an apartment, you know, for three months. So yeah. he was just here and he was working for us, and it was you know got to hang out with him his last few bachelor months. Whatever. Anyways, Charles was here, also insignificant. I think it's insignificant to Donnie and Wes. They think it's part of the story. Anyway, <laughs> Donnie and Wes, and I'm like, the part of the frustrating thing was like how how Wes always said he needed a list. Yeah. And when he had a list, that's when he was right. He was on go mode mm-hmm. when he had a list. And uh, <clears throat> and most of the time, if he had a list, he was on go mode. Yeah. But for some reason. So I get him, I get them started, and I give them a list. And it's like, it's a lot of things, but it's very simple things. Move these 20 pallets over here, we're going to burn them. Move this feed over here. Move this firewood out there. Like 12 things like that. And then <clears throat> I um, I go to the warehouse, and they're sitting on the Can-Am. When I tell them these things, they're both sitting there. And so I go to the warehouse, and I sit down at my um, computer, and then I forgot I needed to ship some jeans to somebody or something, some rock and roll denims to somebody, plug. And um, so I was like, (laughs) oh, crap, I need to go back to the house. And I pull back up to the house, and it's been about 15 minutes, not quite that long, maybe 20. And I see that Can-Am still sitting there. I was like, that's weird. I was like, oh, there's still two people in it. And I pull up, and they're both on their phones. And I got so mad. <laughs> I was so mad. And I parked the truck, canceled. It was like that moment in the movie. Cancel all my appointments today. Cancel all my. <laughs> and it was, and I, I got back in and did some manual labor. And they worked for me that day. And they knew it. But apparently they were waiting on Charles or something. It's like, I don't give a sh- what Charles is doing. I told y'all to do these things. Anyways, they didn't expect me to drive back up. I didn't expect y'all to be sitting there still. <laughs> but uh, that was... Man, it what? wasn't it, Man, what? I don't think I've ever seen you like mad. Do you? Do y'all do that? No. Because we're not waiting on anyone. It, just, it does seem a little uncharacteristic for you, though. But he, didn't was, like, he didn't like yell. No, I actually didn't say much of anything. He, you just kind of knew. I was just... That we have I, to yeah, I didn't, I didn't cuss <laughs> them. I didn't tell them they were, you know, worthless, lazy, lazy bag of bone, you know, intern maggots, scumbags. Yeah. You were just thinking it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just one of those moments where they had clear instructions and there was no reason for them not to be doing it. And then they didn't. So, And because it was also like, at what point were you going to start working? I guess is maybe what made me mad. But... And also, like like I said, Wes always wanted a list. Yeah. And it's like, that was kind of his excuse when he wasn't working. Well, I didn't know what you wanted me to do. And so it's like, dude, it's 8.30 in the morning. And it was like late July. It would have been because that's when you got here in early mm-hmm. July. So it's like the hottest. So it's just like, in my mind, it was like, why would you not want to get this done as quick as possible, you know? Because at 2 o'clock you're going to have a heat stroke if you're doing some of this. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I I guess like, I think that communication is important with people. Donnie has not messed up. You know, Donnie's been pretty good since then. So, and he also kind of shifted from intern work to he's got a job, a role here. That was the other thing for Donnie too. Like Wes wanted to do that stuff. Donnie really more than, those kind of jobs. I was going to do whatever. Donnie, <laughs> Donnie's willing to do the thing that helps bring in the most yeah. revenue, which is editing. And he's been killing it ever since. That's why he's been yeah. here two and a half years. But Make a job, Donnie. Anyway, I guess to me, it's like there should be a certain level of 
I make a lot of assumptions, you know, and I guess like there's a certain level of work ethic that I assume one would should have, you know, and so like it's probably not something I'm going to talk about until you give me a reason to talk about it. So I was mad enough then I didn't want to talk about it. I was like, I'll show you and I'm watch over y'all today, but I don't, it's better that I not talk about what I'm thinking. <laughs> but <clears throat> anyways, yeah, I haven't been, I don't remember what other interns, but, the, and, and so that was the other thing too. Like every intern goes through this phase like the three week mark is really one of them where you can tell what kind of person they really are. Yeah. You know, I remember I was pretty livid at Garrett Kelly. This joker, I'd had back surgery. Leroy was out there. We're unloading round bales. Of course, I I don't have a tractor. I probably won't for a long time. But we're unloading round bales by pushing them off of the flatbed trailer. Sure. <laughs> I'm fresh off of a back surgery. Like, not like two days before, two weeks before, but like I'm barely to the point where I should be doing manual labor. Also, I do not like waking people up. You know, that's another assumption. If we're going to start at 7, set your alarm because I'm not calling your ass at 640 to help you wake up, you know. It's like a phobia. Like, if there's people in the house, like I'm tiptoeing. Even if I know they all got to be up, like, I just, I don't like it. I just, like, you sleep. Like, I, I've, I've, maybe it's like a, <clears throat> like, I just, I don't like to be randomly woken up with, like, dishes and stuff, so I just don't do it. <laughs> and. That's why so, I, I feel like I never oversleep. Damn. Like, when I know we got to do something yeah. in the morning. Like, I know how. Well, also, you experienced me leaving Wes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were supposed to, I was going to film with the Dallas Cowboys, with Rowdy. Of the Dallas Cowboys, yeah, but at Cowboy Stadium in the locker room for the American, Wes was supposed to drive me because it's like there's so much work on I can do on my phone. A two and a half, three hour drive, like I can get a lot of work done. Yeah, well, he's you know he's an intern. Like, hey man, just go with me. You also get to go hang out with Dallas Cowboys, and then I get to work three hours there, three hours, six hours. I can be DMing, I can be posting, I can be editing, I can be doing a lot of work, and so. We were supposed to leave at six and he wasn't there. So I left. <laughs> like it felt zero remorse. Especially this joker didn't call me till seven. He slept in an hour past yeah. it. Anyway, diesel truck outside his house, like, okay, put it in park and I go. So I, I kind of gave him a hard time. I told him that I got to meet Dak Prescott, uh Zeke. Ezekiel Elliott, Troy Aikman. I was like, Yeah, we did this big commercial. <laughs> he was upset so anyways donnie got to witness that so he's like i better not be late we almost left gabe yesterday we did leave gabe yeah gabe was late and yeah, we waited for him yeah we were ready to go at 7 20 i, I texted him i said my truck is gonna be in drive at 7 30 because i was gonna have to drive slow and uh <clears throat> so anyways my truck was in drive at 7 30 and he wasn't there so i was like i gotta go anyway i, I was really surprised you wait like Pulled over and waited. Well, because I had told him 7.30. I told him, oh, that I pulled over? Yeah, on the highway. It was past 7.30. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I was like, I knew what the day was going to be like. I was yeah. like, man. It was a cool day. You did not want to miss that. I yeah. was like, I'm was like, i going to pull Sorry, over. If you want to come back, if you want to come meet me on the side of the road. So, um. <clears throat> Well, he was about to get in the truck with us, and Leroy goes, uh-uh, go up there and get your chewing out. <laughs> Is that what he said? Yeah. Because cause he tried to get into our truck with Katrin, and there's, like, no room. And he, like, just threw everything in, like, she has all of her clothes in there. And they're like, no, go up to Dale's truck. <laughs> Everybody wanted to do <laughs> Well, I didn't f – I, I was a little head. mad that I had to wait on the side of the road. But outside of that, I just felt bad for him. I wasn't mad at him. I just felt the bad for was him because he, he was going to miss out on it. But – but, like, they were waiting on us, you know, and there's a camera crew there, yeah. and Craig yeah. is waiting. Yeah. And, like, at the time, Craig didn't know I was going to pay him. So he's like, he's like, all right, I'm doing this favor for you, which even me paying him is still a favor. Yeah. Right? And yeah. I, I'm, and so, like, I, I freaking hate being late. Yeah. I, hate oh, I agree. I hate it. I was getting nervous I'm not gonna wait the Dal I'm not going to make the Dallas Cowboys wait yeah. on me. I'm not going to make, you know. Now, if we're going to film at Guacamole Camp yeah, that's and different. it's 730, like, I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, like, all right. What call 
somebody. But if we got to leave at 730 because Craig Cameron or Trevor's, we're going to Trevor's or like the Dallas Cowboys are waiting on us, like, I'm sorry, but like, <laughs> we're going. Anyways, yeah. so, dude, so we're unloading these round bells. Back to my original story. <laughs> This joker, Garrett Kelly Johnson, walks out of that bunkhouse at like 10, 15 oh, a.m. What day of the week is this? Dude, this is a weekday. Whoa, oh. dude. <laughs> this is a week. I mean, this is like, and this Man. is week. He had been here two two weeks maybe. Mm-hmm. And he stretches out. He's like, oh, I overslept. <laughs> he got a chewing. Yeah. It wasn't right then because I needed to calm down. I've gotten better about like not just like I was like I'm gonna wait till tomorrow and make sure my emotions are removed from this. So the next day, I walked in the garage and I was like, Garrett. <laughs> but he was like, Did he even see, did he see it coming? No. Oh. Then that was another w- reason why, Dang. like, I knew I had to talk to him. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You I was like, this is not a vacation, but. He did really great after that. Yeah, it was just yeah, a little, yeah. you know. What I don't, do, you, what do you guys say a lot? It's hard to know what you don't know. Yeah, yeah, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah, that's yeah. it. That's it. I've been late so many times. That's something I've really had to try to work on. It's, if I know someone needs me, yeah, I'm usually there. Like, yeah. I don't get very – I'm pretty laid back, but, like – I'm not a morning person. Yeah, me I oversleep. If, I, if I'm on my time, I oversleep a lot. But if I think someone – well, and like, and I'm I'm not like that all the time, mm-hmm. you know. Like I'll give like if people stroll in like this morning, you got here at eight ten, mm-hmm. which like who cares? Oh, yeah. here it comes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, like I'm saying like when Donnie gets here, he sits down and he does his job all day. Yeah, and like he he they very seldom does he leave early or take a day off or whatever, and it's just like. I'm, there's just no point in me watching the clock and just yeah. being like, you know, like a dang drill instructor, especially with what we do in the warehouse. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes when we're ranching, it's a little more, there's a little more urgency. Sure. And maybe it's because I'm used to working with my dad growing up, but yeah. like, it's like, all right, we need to leave at a certain time. <clears throat> Usually, because with ranching, I can see like, if you show up late, then you saddle your horse late, then you get out there late, now it's hot, then the cows come in late, then the cows don't come in at all. Like, it's just like, man, sometimes with ranching, like, there's a little more urgency. Yeah. You don't want to waste your time with driving, with, you know. But, um, but yeah, with freaking T-shirts and these videos, like, somebody strolls in, and especially, like, 8, 12, he's working, and he's working hard. So, like, I would rather Donnie... If he's running late that morning, spend that time, grab some food or whatever, feel good. Yeah. We've missed nine minutes. Like, yeah. who cares? Well, he's going to make it saying? up somewhere else anyway. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, yeah. Whereas if I get chew him out right then, like, then okay, just, now all of a sudden he's going to be frustrated. He's not going to do as good. You know, like, you yeah. just pick your battles. He's going to be know? mad at everyone. Not only does Donnie have <laughs> an excellent work ethic, but he is very fleet of foot. He saved me the other night from breaking out all of my teeth on the fence. Oh, man. We <laughs> Freaking horse. That bull, I mean, slammed the gate open. <laughs> slammed it open. Is it stand at the end of that rope? Because he sends it, and I thought, oh, good, I just won't have to pull very hard. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> Yeah, I should have told you, you're not going to have to pull it all. <laughs> like you're, yeah. you're more or less going to have to stop it from crashing into You know, the- to be honest, if we have, like, not that very many people, we could probably get away with not having somebody pull that gate. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But, but had Donnie not been standing there to, to, to s- slow down my Dude, <laughs> inevitable if, crash. If we wouldn't have warned you at all, oh. you would have gotten knocked smooth out. Yeah. 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 Especially with where you were standing when you first grabbed it. Like, yeah. I need to watch a video of this. I didn't realize. I don't know that, that I that have fast. it. Yeah. I don't know that I have it I because it. I was so folk. I was like, I didn't even see your bull ride because I was yeah. like, is Logan okay? I've never like noticed that he kicks it out that hard. I'll show you. Well, I've got it. It's I just got video. Yeah. No, he just. But <laughs> anyways, going back to Donnie, like it's just like just really. I don't like, expect people. Like I expect people to work hard. Like Anna, I'm paying you for a job, so do the job. But I also don't expect people to treat this company like they own it. Yeah. Now, when I find somebody that does treat it like that, for instance, Lisa treats this company like she owns it. Like, 
she gets rewarded for it, you know? But it, but like, I don't, like, I don't expect someone to, you know, like people work hard and then I just, I, I'm also like not of the cliche bull crap. Like you can't find good help or like yeah. think people aren't like they used to be like, I think all that's trash. People are exactly like they used to be. Hindsight's not twenty twenty. Yeah. yeah. Everybody everybody always says hindsight's twenty twenty, and that is bullshit, I think. It is not twenty twenty. When you look back at your life, you always remember stuff better than it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You always do. Just like oh, yeah. you, you remember the highlights of stuff and you don't remember how crummy things are. Yeah. You know, yeah. like relationships, ex girlfriends, um, jobs that you had. Um like there's always, and so like people look back, but man, I rem- like back when they bucked, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like <laughs> bulls didn't buck as hard as you know. That's one thing that people don't say anymore. That's undeniable. Yeah. Bulls buck harder today. You can definitely we were watching that. What was that? We were watching. But the, other but the night? saying back when they bucked is just like, and people are like, man, people used to work, you know, way like, I I don't, I doubt they did. Yeah. You know, it's like now, like I would argue there's probably in some ways like there's a lot of ways and that and people that work i don't know i just don't see somebody i just don't see 20 leases in a warehouse 20 years ago yeah because now fear is a big motivator and i think that that might be a thing like back then where a lot more people were scared to like people ran on fear i feel like that like a lot of bosses from stories I've heard, like, like your old school boss is a heart and he's like a jerk. And so now all of a sudden you're operating off of fear. Right. So like, I guess that's one thing that's different. I don't want people to operate off of fear. Like I would rather Donnie come in and work hard because he likes his job and he wants yeah. to be here. You burn people out that way, right? You know? Yeah. Yeah. You find somebody all of a sudden they've been in the same job for 12 years because they, you know, trying to pay their mortgage and they hate their boss and they hate their job and they hate their life. Yeah. You know, (laughs) it's fun around here though. Like that's what I think people should know that, that it's, you know, there's, there's a lot of people here every day who are working hard at a lot of things, like really, really working hard, but it's still, it's fun. Half the warehouse and there's, you know, it's people come about working in here by two different ways you know there's like a local crew and they most of them you know they're out of gram they have families and they they uh when we're done with like shipping stuff they all you know it might be two o'clock in the afternoon and they leave they've got they've got kids they'll pick them up from school and then we've got (coughs) other you know people that are on salary who um typically they're more the interns you know also None of you have anywhere to go, <laughs> so that works out. Yeah. But you guys all work all day, and um, so anyway, it's just kind of people come in at a different. But it keeps. Um, that's really loud. Sorry. <laughs> it keeps like these got the families are motivated. It's like man, they get to be home. They're with their families, but the interns, you know, they're obviously their motivation for being here is a little different. Yeah, they're trying to learn. They're trying to, you know, they work more. And they'll get paid more, but then, you know, their motivation for being here is different. They don't have a family to go home to, but we're going to buck bulls this afternoon at 2.30 in the afternoon. Or yesterday we went to Craig Cameron's, you know, whereas the people that are local, you know, they're not going to get to go do that. <coughs> I did let Caitlin go yesterday. That was different. Caitlin's worked for us the longest outside of Lisa. She was she was recruited. She's not an intern. <coughs> I've known Caitlin almost as long as I've known you. I've known you 16 years. I think I've known Caitlin 14. So, anyway. Willie? Has Willie made me mad? No, just frustrated. The one time with Frostbite, like the fourth or fifth time I got on him. What'd you do? You just told me to get off and... I've... No, I got a video I could show you. <laughs> I don't think Put you're really that mad. <laughs> what, what video? I think I think you need to make a yeah. decision. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, the one with. The <laughs> I liked it though. Like everyone was like, I don't know why he was being. I was like, I Wait, when? What did I say? 
you were just like, you got to make a decision. And like before I get like, I was glad you did this. Cause oh, I, I had respond, that conversation with you. I respond. I feel like I respond well to like stuff like that. Like it's better for me. <clears throat> and it really like put in Willie, perspective. Oh, you're not going to let me share my own story. Doesn't. Um, That's rough. Well, I don't think you're really remembering it correctly. I think you said <laughs> you, you need to make a decision. No, I think you said you're like, you need to make a decision. I don't really remember it being like that. I remember, I think you It was me heard. putting the rope on, and he said, go to the left. And, like, I went to the left, and I was too far. I was like, no, bring it back to the right now. And I was bringing it back to the right. He's like, no, just get off. I'll show you. Yeah. And then. That's a little bit. He was like, this then. thing will kill you. Like, is I think it was right after we had the podcast with Ross. That's not the same as the, you need to make a decision. Like, oh, I'm not, I wasn't there for that. That was a different kid. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was a different intern. Yeah, I know. That's Tell not us. what I'm remembering. I'm remembering my story. So dude. what were you, what were you going to say, Willie? Oh, I was just going to say, like. You're like, this thing will explicit kill you. Like, yeah. you need to make, like, if you want to get on this thing, you got to get mad. Like, you got to get a place right, ready to fight. And, like, I kind of, like, really, that's when I think my, I mean, my suit procedure isn't that good now, but I feel like now it's a lot more easier for me to, like, all right, this, everything I'm doing to get up to this matters, like, yeah, mentally preparing for that. And I think that was a big, a big difference. Well, I don't, I don't think you necessarily, you don't have to get mad. But there's a certain level of aggression you have to get to. Yeah, Cody like, Teal. Yeah. PBR. He's a world champion. PBR world finals. Like, one of the greats going right now. Cody Teal. Arguably the nicest man in the world. And I've not... I, it's been a long time since I've been around his shoot procedure. Like, back when we were college rodeoing. Like, and so, like, I just haven't... I don't know. But, like, he doesn't get angry. But he very well understands the aggression and the level of intensity he needs to get to. And sometimes when interns, like, it's hard to communicate just, you know, how dangerous it is. You know, just like people die. Yeah. People, that's it. That's all you got to say. People People die, have yeah. died doing this, period. And uh, <clears throat> and so, yeah, what, I can't remember that exactly, but like what, what Donnie's talking about is like there was an intern. And the, the main thing that... So this kid that, that Donnie's talking about had told me he had been on about 50 head of bulls. And maybe he had. But <clears throat> it was kind of abrupt. It, not, it was spontaneous, not abrupt. It was spontaneous that, we, that he was getting on a bull that day, which I thought would help him because what did we do? Uh, well, we went and picked up John John. Um, it was getting close to fall. We were picking up John John late summer, and, um, and I brought him to the house. And I was like, all right, we're going to buck him. And uh, he was like, okay, let's do it. And he gets his bull rope warmed up, and he's a bull rider. And, you know, he had been a bull rider, and he was telling me, like, I'm a bull rider, and I want to come intern for you and ride bulls. And I was like, all right, let's do it. And so he works, the, you know, walks through his suit procedure. And John John is a herd bull, for those of you that aren't familiar with my string. Um, <clears throat> black muley herd bull, you know. And uh, jump kick, maybe. maybe. Really more like lope down the pin. Yeah. And uh, so he gets down on John John, and I've communicated this with him. Like he knows he's a herd bull, and he gets down on there, and he he gets slides up on his rope, and he's holding the gate, and then he just sits there, and he just sits there, and I was like, "All right, bud, we're ready," and he just sits there, and I was like, I can't remember what I said, but there were some explicits, and I made him get out, and Leroy was like, "Man, you need to get on this bull and just show him," and so I got on the bull, barehanded, with my tennis shoes. And he loped in a circle, and I got off the bull, and I was like, dude, you got to let this. I don't know what, you know, I think he'd only been on, like, 15 or 20 bulls. But <clears throat> he just, you know, had, he had just kind of, what's the word? Not deceived me, but he was just a little whatever. And uh, that was what was frustrating about it. But uh, that's when I've tried to have more conversations with. So then the next day it gets on John John. John John turns his ankle back, kind of drags him against the fence, and turns his ankle back. And I was like, get up. And he was just laying there like, oh, he was moaning. I was like, get out of the arena. Magically, the pain disappears. He jumps to his feet, runs to the fence, climbs up the fence, jumps over, lays back down. (laughs) 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 Goes back to moaning. I was like, like, so I didn't pay it any mind. I just let him lay out there until he finally limped up there. And uh, two days later, he was back at home. I didn't send him home. He went home, but that shook us. That shook him to the core because yeah. two days before that, he was like, "Man, if you fired me, 
and if you were would allow me, I would work at Subway just so I could come out here in the evenings and be around these animals. Cause he was, he had lived in the inner city, um, which, which was fine. Like I was all for it. I was like, shoot. Yeah. You know? And again, I didn't even fire him. He just went back. It, I don't know why it shook him. But the other thing was he had a girlfriend. He had never been away from her. This was the only intern we'd ever had that was like less than 21 years old. And, uh, <clears throat> I think he was missing his girlfriend. I think that's what that was. Well, you said something yesterday that I thought was interesting that, you know, you can, it's kind of these two ways to go about things. If you're interested in several different things and you're trying to do them, I'm paraphrasing, obviously, but the, the gist of it was if you're interested in this, this, and this, and you're trying to do all those at once, that's fine. Or you may just really be interested in this one thing, and if that's all you're doing, you're going to get better at it a lot faster. Yeah. But I think it's probably, you know, like, if you don't want to ride bulls, there's no shame in that, no, right? You know, no. like, I mean, if it, just because somebody else, I, I, it's an easy frame of mind to get into where you, I think for a lot of people where you think like, okay, well, this is what I should be doing. Yeah. Because, because of this or because of that. But if you really don't want to, well, aside from getting yourself or somebody else hurt, because you don't really want to be there, there's no shame in not. Riding bulls, you know. Well, another misconception, another cliche that I think is not true, kind of like hindsight is twenty twenty, which I don't believe. The other one is never quit. People tell you that your whole life. Yeah. Yeah. When absolutely quitting is a strength. Yeah. yeah. If you're doing and the wrong When thing. you can quit something, dude, I've never been more relieved in my life than when I quit riding bareback horses. Yeah. And that was the first time I was like, why in the world would you say never quit? You know, and like parents are just like, it's like, man, I I hate baseball. I'm just sitting on the bench. Well, you're gonna you're gonna ride it out, and you're gonna you know you know. And, oh, just, and then just the I rest of their story. season is just miserable. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. when you start something by God, you're gonna finish it. What like, what if they hate? Like, no, yeah. that's yeah. now. I get it. If, if it's you make one a thing, commitment to a team, I think you should at least finish this. If season. if that team is depending on you, yeah, yeah. If that, you know, like <clears throat> sometimes it's yeah. There's exceptions to the rules, you know. Like I started playing basketball, which I wish I would have played more basketball. But like the team was depending on me, yeah. You know, because they didn't have enough people on the bench. Like that's one thing. But like yeah. there's some extenuate. You're playing a club sport. You're playing this or that, and there's like you want to quit something. That, that, that I guess I can see where the argument is to be made there, but like yeah. when you're a kid, yeah. and like you're riding the bench, and you're not, and and parents are just like, no, by God, you started this, you're gonna finish it. In hindsight's twenty twenty. You see, well, and some of that too is them trying to live vicariously through their kids. Hundred percent. You see a lot of that in the stock show world. You We're see a lot of that this. on social media. Yeah, it's like good heavens, no, you know, like parents forcing their kid yeah. to go to a certain college so they can post on social media how proud they are so the Karen down the street who they don't like yeah. will think certain things of them. Yeah. You're trying to you're forcing your kid to do something so you can impress someone you don't even like. Yeah. Dude, that's the like the worst poison that you could that could ever be brought on like even if you're doing it yourself. Like dude, somebody will buy a truck, buy a house with rooms in it that they're never going to use. So people that they don't like will think certain things about them. Dude, that's a disease right there. Yeah. See, yeah. You, you know heard it saying? here. You know what I'm saying? You heard it here. Dale Dude. Brisby's a quitter. Dude, yeah. I'm, but you're the I'm best at quitting. I'm, f- I'm in favor wrong with that. of quitting. That's like yeah. what we talked about yesterday with soccer. I, did, I, I hated soccer in college, and I just kept playing because, oh, you can't quit. You shouldn't quit. There was probably five kids on that. I, I, I hope they don't watch this. I'll tell them. <laughs> there was like five kids on that soccer team that I actually genuinely cared about and still talk to. If the rest of them just disappeared, I wouldn't care. And the coach, I could not stand the coach. And we are just playing. And I was like, there's no reason. I want to quit. I don't want to be here. I was rooting for our team to lose in the playoffs. I was like, mm. I cannot be here anymore. Yeah. And like, it just, that whole, that whole fall for like two years at college, like, I just hated life because I was doing this sport that, I could not have given two craps about. Yeah. And the kids around there, like, these egotistical, like, dude, you're a D3 soccer player at a branch <laughs> campus at Penn State. And these kids just think they're on top of the world 
And I was like, man, this is not where I want to be. Yeah. So on top of doing a sport I didn't like, like if I would have quit and found something else, like I probably would have been a lot happier. But it led me to here, so maybe it all worked out. But to Donnie's point too, I think doing that like at least once in your life. Yeah. If you got like if they you know, somebody makes you stick it out through a season yeah. or something like that. I think that's that's a, still a good lesson because yeah. that sticks with you. You know, you're like, okay, well, I don't want to get into yeah, something. If that might not, I did finish that might not have been, like, the best example. But, like, for instance, stock showing. Yeah. My old man was an ag teacher, so we had to do it all. But, like, by the time I was a senior, the only thing I was doing was commercial steers. Yeah. Which, if you're an ag, you need to do commercial steers. That's such a great program. Ask your ask your ag teacher about it. It's the only stock showing event that should exist. Yeah. Showing lambs, showing pigs, showing halter steers is all bullshit. That 100%. In what world? In what world does it make sense for you to spend $10,000 on a show calf? You spend an insane amount of money on giving him this feed. It's not realistic. That doesn't teach anything. You know, like, that's not the beef that we're eating in these grocery stores. No. I or think at a steakhouse. Like, that's an unrealistic thing. What's the point of doing it, then? It's, and the, yeah, and it it's doesn't. It's just evolved to that point. It's just evolved yeah. to that. It's Whereas like commercial steer, you know, like, you, you you lead this steer through the ring. Yeah. <clears throat> Dude, this kid could have not ever even touched that steer. Really? Somebody else could have fed it. So yeah. Like, the judge doesn't know. Like, he's got to know what he's doing in the yeah. show ring. Yeah. But, like, commercial steers... You got, in Houston, it's a pin of three steers. All right. You do not halter break them, because in what world do you need to halter yeah, break yeah. A, a, a freaking beef animal? Mm -hmm. So they're in a feedlot pin. You don't wash them. Yeah. Who cares if, they're if looking, what, they're, yeah. what their dang hair looks like? Um, so anyways, it's a feedlot deal, and you're graded on four criteria. Twenty. They're each worth 25%. Number one is <clears throat> you take a written test on the feedlot industry mm -hmm. and the ag industry in general. Number two, you do a record book. So, like, what would you feed him? How much did so it cost you? So you have to prove you? that you were involved. You are deducted points if your cost of gain is too high. Dang. So you can't buy the yeah. most expensive feed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Number three, there's a the, the 25% goes to your cattle, the performance mm -hmm. of them. So you can have some crummy calves, and you still got a shot at winning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then number four is um, in Houston, they do an oral interview. Mm -hmm. In San Antonio, they do a speech. So in the oral interview, I'm sitting there, and this this these interviewers, they get to, you, they're going to find out pretty dang quick yeah. if you were involved. Yeah. So 75% is based on your knowledge of the industry because mm -hmm. of the interview, the written test, yeah. and the record book. Then that 25% is the performance of the cattle. And Golly. if you try to, if you go buy show steers, yeah. like you got to record all those numbers. Mm -hmm. So if you were to buy $10,000 steers, like your record book is, you're going to get like crap for They're going to find out. Yeah. There's no way you can fake What's it. What's your cost of gain? And then not to mention like, dude, I use those. I use what I learned in commercial steers every day. Feed conversion. Yeah. Like how efficient a, uh, an animal is when they're eating, you know, a good feed. What's a good feed conversion? Five mm. pounds in the feedlot. If you can feed, you know, a good average daily gain, three pounds. So it took 15 pounds for this animal to gain three pounds. Yeah. And that cost me, you know, a great cost to gain. Mm. Now my cost to gain is 41 cents. So if he's gaining one pound and then he, you know, it cost me 41 cents to put that pound on. Yeah. Well, if he brings, you know, a dollar twenty. Well, there's some margin. In, anyway, mm -hmm. you know, see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I'm able to at least talk about those. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you just show a steer, you're like what the hell is feed conversion? Like, yeah. Is that just like a dog average show daily? Much with the cow? Exactly. Yeah. Not, exactly. What is that? Is. What is the point of doing that? Not to say that yes. I think that you can still have some some meaningful experiences doing that. Yeah, yeah. you can. But, but you can have a meaning, meaningful experience raising the dog. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So the, it's the same damn thing. You're right. The problem, Train the dog. The problem least, comes when what, what you were talking about when you walk, you see somebody walk a steer into the ring. Yeah, and you can tell that they've it's it's a it's an expensive steer. They hired an expensive fitter. Yeah, and you know that's the first time that person's ever touched that animal. Mm. And, and and that's an that's exception upsetting. to the rule that there's yeah, they're but not happens. all like no, that. of course not. They're yeah. not all. There's some kids not. out there that love it and work and really work hard. hard. At it. And they they feed they feed their animal they yeah. train them because I I I was I showed steers yeah and I would get up at five o'clock 
I'd be up two hours before my old man. And I'm tying up my steers, you know, like Mm -hmm. I've been there. Like I put there, we would lead them around horseback, you know, Leroy and I, or my dad and I, and we would like lead them horseback. We would halter break them. But by the time I was like old enough to look at like, what is this? Like (laughs) I've never halter break it, halter break it. I've never halter broke a steer since then. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the hell good did that do for me? Well, the other benefit to it, it did is, more for the horse yeah. leading the, the than yeah. it did the, yeah. you know. And if you've got kids living in town. You know, I raised pigs because I thought, well, I don't really have, I, well, there's several reasons, but I raised hogs. And that, well, dude, the stock show industry is parents living vicariously through their kids. Yeah, most of it. But my parents didn't have anything. Like, if I if there was nobody <laughs> else around and I had to be out of town and nobody yeah, else was, was there and I asked them, could you teacher. please feed, it's, they, they, they would, would have to it. ask you how and what. Right, exactly. Yeah. They didn't have anything. And that's how it should be. But if you got a kid, you know, a kid living in town and doesn't have you know, the means to do anything else, and you, there's yeah, a school true. farm, and they can raise a couple of pigs, they'll get something out of it. Yeah, right, sure. I yeah. get that. And and you know where the stock show industry started. Right, right. You know, it's like, it's, it's, it's 100%. Like, I don't want to get... My frustration, it's like, when I was in commercial steers, as a, when I go to San Antonio... When I go to Houston, they have it in Amarillo too. They're, the commercial steer program is like the stepchild of the livestock industry. Which is sad. Cause that's, what, a- that's where this frustration I oh, have yeah. is coming from. Yeah. There'd be 40 of us, and then there'd be 4,000 kids showing, leading these steers. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it's like, this should be reversed. It should yeah. be. There yeah. should be yeah. 4,000. Like, dude, my steer went and like fed families at an affordable rate in a grocery store. Right. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I when my I fed <clears throat> me and my sister uh she won San Antonio. Dancy, she's from the show. Super sharp individual. It's like a $12,000 scholarship yeah. she got out of that deal. She won San Antonio. She had a great speech, she had a great record book. My mm. old man was a whiz with these record books. People would drive from all over to learn, learn how to from from my old man. And now my sister does it for Graham, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, Texas and Newcastle. So, anyways, like, but we when those calves, dude, we fed this steamrolled corn that I got from Headley, the same feedlot I'd worked at because I knew the manager Bob. And so, but that steamrolled corn, that stuff will go sour. Yeah, you can't keep it. Yeah. The, like the the moisture content was like it was like fourteen fifteen percent. Not that I would expect like a normal show, you know. If you just get like a, a a deal of corn, like the moisture content is nothing. Yeah. Well, yeah. steamrolled corn, yeah. it's like, dude, it's hot, uh-huh. it smells delicious, and it smells like frosted flakes almost. Yeah. But and then it's got the moisture content is crazy, and so like, dude, I was I was like a scientist feeding these because it had to be affordable, mm-hmm. you know. But I wanted it to be effective, and my sister, <clears throat> dude, I had that Studebaker trailer that the welders yeah. on. Yeah, I had a nineteen seventy nine Ford flatbed called the skid mark because it was white but it had a green stripe on the top so we called the skid mark and that studebaker every three days i would drive to headley at five in the morning and bob would jump on the front end loader and give me a scoop of that feed i would go across the scales and weigh it and because i remember having to go back one time because i was like ma'am i was in the truck when i weighed empty and i was out of the truck when i weighed full it ended up being like pennies but i felt so bad and i was like you gotta add this you know i probably weighed you know 110 pounds <laughs> yeah. at the time but anyway so i did that every three days because you couldn't just you know regular corn heck it could sit there for a year and be fine but yeah. not when it's got a 14 percent moisture yeah, content. When it's wet, it doesn't last yeah she rolled we rolled these steers across and we we both had prime ones because they they kill them and then not like i mean i'm saying like they Sorry, that's right in front of everybody. They, they harvest these animals <laughs> and they grade out. them. Dispatch. They grade them on the rail. <laughs> they grade them on the rail. Like a yeah. USDA um, inspector grades these. Oh, at the she, competition. Like well, not in front of everyone, but they grade them. <clears throat> so they'll they'll grade them. They actually do a. They did a sonogram. Oh, and so really? like, yeah. yeah. So they grade them live, and then it'll be confirmed later so Dang like it. they'll grade you right there yeah. these 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 two judges on what your cattle are and they'll make some assumptions i don't remember what the the live judging was but when they came back and the usda graded these calves as Dang. prime ones and it was like the and and uh I, she gave me when she won she got an award for record book speech written test and she got an award for uh uh the cattle 
And since I had been the one driving, like she would feed, but I would drive and go get that feed for us. And uh, she gave me the pen. Mm. It was like a wooden cool. pen that had an inscription. Oh, I thought cool. it was funny. I was like, because my ass wasn't as near as smart as she was. <laughs> so, like, I had great cattle, but everything else was, like, way down here, you know? Yeah. And so she gave me the pen, and I got the pen. And I, I still have it somewhere, but it's like San Antonio, best steers, best pen. And anyway, sorry, that was like, for some of y'all out there listening, you probably aren't listening, but like, well, if it's they were like, falling asleep, this moment probably woke them up. They kill them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they, they kill them. Yes. <laughs> no, so sorry. That's like slaughterhouse. You get a little. You I do have little. one question. What happened to the skid mark? Um, the guy like a cool truck. <laughs> Sound like a cool truck, truck man. Seventy nine Ford. So flat remember, Come on. remember me at the the working um, for my granddad auctioneer. Yeah. yeah. Um, the dip guy, not mm-hmm. him, but Kent Bizzle. Shout out to Kent Bizzle. Also a cool last name. He bought it from me. Do you still have it? I, he's it's it's not running, but he does still have it. I'm gonna bring it over cares. to my shop. Yeah, Willie likes sees the biggest piece of trash truck. And Dude, <laughs> this sucker, 1979, trying baby. to drive to rodeos next spring, and he's like, I think I'm gonna buy this. You didn't see that one yesterday. No. Craig rolled up in it. I was like, dude, I dig your truck. He's like, thanks, man. Oh, yeah, that old flatbed he has. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's, I forget what he called it. He's been having that a long time. He's like, thanks, man. I was like, that's cool. Anyways, dude, I can get worked up about some Chicks dig series. old trucks, Donnie. Dude, people get, do you remember at freaking AM? I I don't, I just don't understand how people get so worked up about livestock showing. They would have, dude. I'm so sorry if somebody out there is listening that does this, but they should be embarrassed because like <laughs> they would have like the stock showing competition for kids in college, like showmanship. Do you remember that? You didn't get in it, did you? <laughs> I was gonna say, oh, man, you yeah, kind of yeah. pause it. But no, I, was I didn't like, know. You know, because I'm like, I'm in college, and I'm like, all right, I'm ready to rodeo. And I was like talking to somebody. I was like, what are you, what are you doing? And they were like going to this deal, and they were gonna show animals in college. They had to borrow animals from school, and they had this showmanship deal. And that's whenever I was like, they're still like living the dream, you know, kind of like playing flag football on a club, you know, yeah. which is, you know, understandable, like whatever. Yeah. But like, that's kind of their version of that. And I was just like, well, as long as you're honest about it, right? Like, that's kind of where I'm landing on it now that we've talked about this. If you're doing that and, and you really like it, it's not hurting anybody. Yeah. All right. As it's long not. as you're honest about it being like the dog show analogy was an interesting. That's a pretty. That's good, what it sounded like to me. My but, brother was an FFA, there's, but there's I don't really pay attention. My to frustration it. is not that they're doing that. My frustration is that commercial steers is a stepchild of the industry, and it shouldn't be because that is. That, I, I wish I would have done it. I, you know, when I found out about it kind of later, I thought I should have done that. This this seems like you would learn a lot more practical inform- knowledge doing this. You know, dude. But, Dude, run the last camera. Yeah. We've already lost both of those? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Willie. Sorry. They don't Black get to see Black Hawk <laughs> Down. Uh, they're going to be really disappointed. Well, y'all have heard me. Uh, at least I'm ranting about livestock showing at the end of the podcast and not at the beginning. <laughs> so don't get me started. Um, We usually wrap these up with life advice. Go for it. No, you go for it. I'm looking at you. You or do you need time? Give me a minute. Yeah, Donnie. Um, I just think try to be a man of your word and uh, take responsibility for your actions. Mm. I know uh, Logan. You're not a huge Matthew McConaughey fan, but I think he's a pretty cool dude. You don't like Matthew McConaughey? Well, it wasn't like you said you didn't like him. You just said like, <laughs> dude, what's you your think he's with, far out now? What's your problem with Matthew? I don't have a problem with him. <laughs> what? I thought you said he was far out, or he was kind of strange. That means cool. I said far out, you know. Yeah, not, I no, no, understood it. Totally tubular. No, I, I just the 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 last couple of things that I've seen him do in interviews, I just didn't really understand what he was yeah. what he was getting at. He's it, probably kind of. I hope, Maddie, if if <laughs> you're hearing listen. this, I'm a big fan of your work. You're really good at what you do. Please don't get involved in politics. <laughs> don't do it, man. <laughs> It's, it'll, it'll, is he trying to? Yeah, he's trying to be governor of I, Texas. I, I thought there's some rumors going around. Maybe you're not, but don't let anybody push you into it. It's that's a you don't need it. Just keep doing what you're what doing. What is he? If he were to f- be standing on this table and fall off of it, which side of the table would he fall off of? 
I think somewhere in the middle. I don't know, but it doesn't matter. Would it be? I think so. Yeah. I read that book you just wrote. That's where my life advice was coming from. <laughs> you think he'd be more left? I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. I think I, I I'm think pretty darn asking. close to the middle. Would he? I it depends he, on I what. I think he would be a little more right. It, it depends on what middle and what parts of yeah. left. He'd yeah. be he'd be in the middle, but his this hand would be on the right a little bit. I don't know. You guys just said middle a lot. Now I'm confused. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Well, yeah. we obviously don't know what we're talking about either. Yeah, anyways. So what's the advice? In his book, he said, it's just as important where you aren't as it is where you are. Yeah. What does that mean? It's just as important as where you aren't. Like, the places, the people you hang out with, it's just important that... The people you don't hang out with are just as important as people you do. Oh, okay, yes. See what I'm yeah. trying to say now? Mm-hmm. Yes. Sorry. If you read the book, you've had it for like 10 weeks. I want it back because <laughs> I kind of want to read it again. Oh, if, yeah. If you want, And I'm afraid your again. dog's going to eat it. If you want to read it again, come get it because I, I have not found the time. Nah, I get it. You're a busy man. Um, Well, aside from an apple a day keeps everyone away if you throw it hard enough, I think the main thing I would have is that – uh. <sighs> Be realistic, you know, have some goals, have a vision for your life, but be realistic about how you're going to get there because, we, you know, that's one thing we talked about. It's like, you know, I want to be a top-hand cowboy, but then all of a sudden if you're spending 10% of your time in a year on that, be realistic about the fact that that might take you 25 years to be a top-hand. Yeah. If you're spending, you know, 30 days out of 300 a yeah. year that that, you know – Anyways, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm. There's nothing wrong with spending no, yeah. 30 days a year being a cowboy. and then, But you can't expect to be a top hand or act like one. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah. On your year two. Yeah. yeah. Man, I've been a cowboy for two years. No, you've been a cowboy for 60 days. Because mm. yeah. that's how much. You know, like, guys in rodeo do that. How long have you been riding bulls? <laughs> Five years. How, how many have you been on total? 23. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, 23. 23. <laughs> so, um, no, you've not been riding bulls for five years. You've been on 23 bulls, you know? And so, like, it's fine to get on 23 bulls in five years. Yeah. Just be realistic about, you know, w- you're not going to put in 60% effort and get out 100% results yeah. Yeah. in anything. You might get lucky occasionally, but that's not a replicatable system that you can implement. Yeah. So whatever you want out of life, be realistic about how you're going to get it. Yeah. What you got? What's your life advice, Logan? I'll tell you the thing that's resonated with me and that I've been trying to work on over the last couple of years is being empathetic. Because <laughs> there have been a lot of things that have gone on the last couple of years that have been hard on, on everybody. And I'm just starting to come to the realization that if you see somebody and maybe you don't understand why they're doing something or it makes you mad. That's your first reaction to it, but you don't really know what's going on with them. Like life's going to beat you down enough. And there are plenty of people who are going to be critical. So if you have an opportunity to just be empathetic to somebody and just be the one thing different that that just say, okay, well, you know, I understand that you're uh, going through something maybe and just try and try to be, be understanding instead of, joining the chorus of people that are piling on because there's a lot of piling on that goes on these days. That's a really rewarding thing for both parties. I yeah. think so. <sighs> Empathy. That is very important. Well, thank you all for listening. Thank you for watching. Um, thank you for, uh, <clears throat> just being involved and, um, yeah, we're on to the next one. Podcast number 77, I think is what this is of, uh, um, Rodeo Time Podcast. So text me at 940-353-0890. Text me the word podcast, and I will keep you updated on when they come out. So thank you, Donnie, for the, the, the soundboard, and we're on to the next one.